ま、いかぽ、ま、なな、いや、ま、いかはれおかこ。ま、いるなら、ま、いかひきひや、かひきひ、ま、いかひきなけこもはな。ま、いかうかけかい、ま、いろかわ、きや、いや、ま、ま、
Imagine that, the welfare brigade, because these were all Kanakas living in King's Landing in the bushes, growing pakalolo on welfare, but they were active in their community and they were organizing and they could recognize injustice. And that's the first step. Yeah, critical consciousness or conscientization, they call it. The ability to recognize and analyze social, economic, political injustice. And so these are the grassroots Kanaka, the Lepo Popolo that I want to acknowledge, who had the courage to make that sac the self sacrifice to organize and to fight for the betterment of, of the Lahui. So I want to be real clear about this. The progress that we made as a Lahui over the past 30 to 40 years has not been out of legislation. It hasn't been because the settlers and the politicians and those who have power felt sorry for us or because they have kindness for us. It's because we fought for these wins and we fought for this progress. And so I'll go through a little genealogy of this. Starting with Kaho Olave, right? Uncle Walter was up on this stage. Walter, George Helm, Emmett Aluli, they landed on Kaho Olave without permission. They pushed the envelope of exposing the desecration to Kaho Olave. And it wasn't because politicians felt sorry for us that they stopped the bombing or they returned the control of the 28,000 acre island to Hawaiians out of kindness. It's because it was a 25, 30 year struggle. We can look at another example. Waukele Opuna, geothermal, Hawaii Island. This 4,000 acre pristine forest that they wanted to build a geothermal power plant. It wasn't because the politicians or those in power felt sorry for Hawaiians and, or had a consciousness of environmental protection. It was because of people like Palikapu Deadman and um, Pele Defense Fund and Baraskipi Iowani and the Hawaii Island Moko Okeave community who fought, who occupied that land, which resulted in one of the largest arrests in modern Hawaiian history. Something like 140 Hawaiians arrested on that day to protect the forest. And that forest is undeveloped. And now Waukele Opuna has been transferred, taken out of the state, and it's transferred to a Hawaiian agency, the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, that at least controls the, the forest and that land. I want to be real clear, it's not because somebody gave it to us. It's because Hawaiians occupied. They defied the legal system. They defied the political system. And they took matters into their own hands and engaged in direct action to protect the aina. Another example, Honokahua, Maui, Ritz-Carlton Hotel. They wanted to build a hotel on a, one of the largest grave sites. Over, 1,200 burials exposed and desecrated. And they didn't, they didn't move that hotel because they wanted to do the right thing. They moved that hotel because people like Skippy Iowane, I just talked to him today, hopped the fence at Honokahua. Skippy was the first one over that fence. Another Aloha Aina, he's no longer with us, Adachi Eaton, was the second one over that fence. And we need to remember these people. We need to remember their sacrifice. If it wasn't for Skippy and Adachi Eaton, Palikapu, and a lot of the Lahui who hopped the fence and exposed that mass burial desecration, we wouldn't have what we have today. The result of, of Honokahua, of a simple act of hopping the fence and exposing this desecration, is the reason why we have burial councils and burial law today. That's direct action. That's not legislation. They're not giving that to us. We're taking matters into our own hands and we're acting as if we are already free, as if we are in control and empowered. 
King's Landing, Hawaii Island, Skippy, started an occupation on Hawaiian homelands. Going on 40 years now, multiple, multiple families living off the grid. It's not because Hawaiian homelands felt sorry, said, oh, we're going to open up some aina for you guys to go live off the grid and build your own house, your own hale. It's because these kanaka took it upon themselves, engage in direct action, go into the forest, as Skippy says, go where dark, where nobody can see, build your hale, occupy. That's King's Landing. Pu'uho nua o waimanalo, bumpy kanahele, bumpy ma, same thing. They don't have that aina because some governor felt sorry for the homeless and wanted to give them some land. Pu'uho nua o waimanalo exists because they fought for it, because they occupied at Makapu'u, because they challenged and defied the legal political system. And they forced them to give them the land that is their, their community now. This is direct action. This is activism. This is not screaming and shouting and protesting and marching. This is taking matter into our own hands and recognizing our own power. Recognizing that we have the power to leverage and push back against the state. And that we can leverage the state into a favorable, favorable position for us. Kekulo kaya puni nihao o kekaha. One of the very first Hawaiian language immersion schools in the late 1980s. Uh, the, the Kekaha community, west side of Kauai, with the Nihao community. They take matters into their own hands because they're not satisfied with the DOE education system. And they start a school in a park in Kekaha, Kauai. It's not because they had permission. It's not because the legislation was, the legislature was giving them money. Direct action. They started their own school at the park without permission. And now today we still have um, that school. And there's been an outgrowth of that school. So Hawaiian language education immersion is also rooted in direct action, in recognizing our own power that we can take matters into our own hands. Of course, culminating today in Mauna Kea, there is no TMT built on the top of Mauna Kea. Why? Because the Opio, the Ku Kia I Mauna, took it upon themselves. While there was a lawsuit going on, and we recognize that sometimes lawsuits are important, but the the other reality is that people blocked the road, shut down that road, prevented vehicles and heavy equipment and construction from continuing to desecrate Mauna Kea. People power combined with political activism and legal efforts. That's why we don't have a TMT on Mauna Kea right now. It's because Hawaiians took matters into their own hands. We could not rely on the state government. We could not rely on environmental law. We cannot rely on political power in the legislature. We have to rely upon ourselves. So these are all examples of what we can do as a lahui when we organize for our own power. And so with that, I want to close out and talk about nonviolent direct action. There's a science to it. There's an analytical part where you recognize the source of injustice, where it's coming from, where you analyze the reasons, the motivation for injustice. <coughs> Understanding that capitalism, racism, settler colonialism plays a big role in our oppression. Where we analyze the path forward, what are the solutions? to reclaim our power. And then we organize. How do we bring our people together and organize ourselves in a way that we, we have power to push back, to fight back, to write back, and reclaim our power to protect those things that are important to us. And of course, in the final stage, we have to exercise that power. And that takes courage, and it takes sacrifice. 
Yeah, and it, it, it really takes a lot of sacrifice. Some of us get labeled. I seen a letter that came out from the civic clubs. They didn't want to participate in this event because they didn't agree with people, the things that people like myself or Kalekoa, the things that we say. They didn't agree with the framing of this event. They didn't agree with the truth that we are in an illegal occupation after 125 years. And that's fine. They don't have to agree, but we know the truth. And we know that we cannot remain idle. And if we reflect upon our legal political history as a Lahui, we know where our power lies. We know, as I just said, what has pushed us forward with burial laws, burial councils, um, protecting fragile environments, resources, protecting those things that are sacred and significant to us. Um, one of the things I just want to close out with is we recognize that we need to organize and learn the science of nonviolent direct action and learn the techniques and the skills of analyzing power. Learning the techniques and the skills of blockades, how to prevent construction, how to shut down roads, how to engage in civil disobedience and civil resistance, and not be afraid by the stigmatized and the labels that they try to place upon us. Because civil resistance and civil dis disobedience is just as American as, Amer as apple pie. There would be no civil rights for Africans Ameri African Americans if it wasn't for civil resistance. And so we cannot be seduced into thinking that these labels um, have somehow have power over us because they're stigmatized. We recognize that we need to train and learn the science of civil resistance and nonviolent direct action because that's what has given us progress and power. And so we, less than a year ago, some of us, myself, Kalekoa Ka'el, Walter Ridi, my Wahine Kamil Kalama, Kaho'okahi Kanuha, some of our friends, Ilima Long, organizers, um, Nalani Balutski, Kahele Duklo, we got together and we envisioned creating our own training organization. Right now, in the, in the continent of the US, America, Turtle Island, there are many opportunities to attend training around nonviolent direct action. We're marginalized. Geographically, it's far. It's expensive. We have to fly out to attend these types of training. So our objective is to bring nonviolent direct action training opportunities to Hawaii. And so we created Huli in the spirit of Kokua Hawaii. That was their slogan. Soli Neheo, Kalani Ohelo, and others. Huli the system. Huli was the term the Hawaiian perspective for revolution. In the spirit of that term, Huli, we, we used it as an acronym for Hawaii Unity and Liberation Institute, where we do research, we, do, we analyze the issues and the power structures, and we try to formulate strategies around nonviolent direct action to fight to protect those things that we hold valuable. So this coming year, keep an eye out for Huli. We want to be able to bring nonviolent direct action training to your community to teach you how to organize, how to create your own power to, in your community. In closing, this whole event was underpinned by a theme of unity. Unity starts in your own community. Let's get out and organize. Mahalo nui, aloha.
stood for us. And mahalo kia kua. I mean, nakupuna that our ancestors went ho'olohe to her. Because when those 120 sailors came off, the USS Boston, armed to the teeth, with two Gatlin guns that could shoot bullets this big, 600 rounds a minute, under the guise that they were going to come here to the sovereign, neutral, recognized kingdom, the Hawaiian kingdom, to protect American lives. There's no American lives at Iolani Palace, Lahui. And ever since that day, January 17, 1893, the presence of the U.S. military complex has never left the shores of Hawaii. Nay. They are still here. And it was because of the might of the U.S. military complex that the success of the usurpers the provisional government. Nine of them were subjects of the kingdom. Lauren Thurston was a second generation missionary. But we are here today, folks. So what I, what I ask you folks every day, breed, get up, as Uncle Leon C. always says, it's a beautiful day in the Hawaiian Kingdom. What you doing today? Oh, I'm taking a stroll in the Hawaiian Kingdom. I woke up in the Hawaiian Kingdom. I went to sleep in the Hawaiian Kingdom. That's the narrative we need to keep speaking because it's the truth, Lahui. No more are we sleeping. Eala! Eala! Mahalo!
we important, eh? The Hawaiians important. Hell yeah. But it's a shame they had to turn out like this. Yeah? So my, I think all the cops are here. Yeah. It's a good time to rob. Yeah. And do whatever. <laughs> you have a good day. Yeah. Oh, old lady. String them up. Old lady. Selling out or oh, buying in. You see, but if you don't know, try, life gon' pass you by just like limo in the current. Dust in the wind from a pile of dust. We started all to pile of dust return. Oh, addictive personalities, physical brutalities, armors on our armors. Self-inflicted bummers, a path of less resistance, selling out or oh, buying in. You see now, if you don't no try, life gon' pass you by. Limo in the current, you like dust in the wind. Keep on singing out. Ooh, uh, is the song called? Excuse me. You know, but you know what? I know you guys. If you know more pepper, take that flag. More eat. You take cane knife, water, take black plastic for catch the rain, make outhouse, plant that flag, and occupy. As the simplest add water and stir kingdom nation you can do. You don't need one constitution. You just need anus, and you go. mission here today to coming in front of you is to let you know there is hope there is hope out there for everybody you just gotta do your research the building right over there right behind the archives you get the bureau of conveyance right across the street Whichever way you guys can figure out how you guys can get those documents to file affidavits on those documents by bringing these to life. The attorney's jobs and the land company's jobs are to prove that you are not the person you claim to be. I proved them wrong. I proved them wrong and it's not over yet. I get two more cases. Two more cases. One went to the Supreme Court are waiting on that one. And now this company wants to mediate. I'm done with the mediating. Because they wanted to mediate this last case. They sat on this case for nine years. While me and my family been suffering in that valley. So no more already. We're taking our aina back. We're taking our resources back. We're taking everything back. And I just want to just let everybody know, the 
If I can help, let me know. There's ways of getting in touch with me. Oh, kapu kapu akea at gmail.com. Kapu kapu akea at gmail.com. Okay? We gotta start one spin. We gotta get people filing in those courts, standing in front of those judges, yeah? Making those claims, fighting. Because these corrupt companies, when they go in front of the judge, when they file quiet titles, they're only required to go up to title guarantee. But if you can do your affidavit, that means they're going to have to go back all the way to the 1850 Privy Council, which gives you an even more fighting chance. Oh, <laughs> 